There's not one, one person that is rich that had that that hadn't had to develop this this all important characteristic of, of being diligent. This is like week five or six, we're still talking about this, but have you gotten it? Why do we need to move on to something new if you have not grasped the concept and you have not been putting it into action? Uh, my assignment was to, was to come and share with you uh, on the prophetic, mm -hmm. and I wanna make sure that we get that assignment done. Yeah. Now, as we dig in here uh, just a bit, and um, I want to talk, actually I want to talk um, from one particular chapter, right? Mm -hmm. And to uh, really just ask the Lord what he wanted me to, uh, mm -hmm. what he wanted me to share um, out of the, uh, out of the book. So here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to, we're going to talk about the, we're going to talk about the uh, conquering your battleground, mm -hmm. conquering your battleground. And I think that this is probably something that uh, probably is befitting uh, for the time. Now you can, you can actually get this book. We have some books out there on the, uh, we have some books out there on the table. So you can actually get this book. And as a matter of fact, we dropped the we dropped the price all the way down just for you guys, uh, just so that you you'd be able to get that. Uh, it's an awesome it's an awesome tool that we have actually. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you desire to get it, uh, you know, just raise your hand and she'll, uh, Elder Vicky, she will uh, uh, she'll she'll get it to you. Um, I want to talk about conquering your How battleground. Much? Yes, ma'am. Uh, just ten dollars, ten ninety five actually. Um, so as we get into this, as we get into this, I think one of the things that um, it becomes well, I think one of the things becomes uh, uh, really important that we begin to identify, and that is how to how to conquer our battleground. Um, you know, there are many things that takes place, uh, that takes place in life. Sometimes when we're going through particular things, we, uh, we sometimes think, you know, that, you know, is it us? Is it me? Is it uh, exactly what is it? We go through things on our, uh, on our jobs. We go through things in our life, in our ministry, uh, in our church. And if you're anything like me, you always want to know exactly uh, how to, how can we take our church from where it is to this next place that God has in mind uh, for our church to actually be? How, how can we actually, uh, how can we actually shift it from where it is to where God desired for it to be? Or, uh, you know, it very well may be that we have a desire of uh, just understanding how do we really take our personal lives or our spiritual lives from a spiritual perspective? How do we take it from where it is to where God have a desire for it to be? And so I want to talk about some of those things because uh, now there is something, some of the things that really, uh, that really, excuse me, that really challenge us in our life they're challenging us. These are challenging things that uh, that we're hit with, uh, and these are these are tremendous opportunities uh, for growth. And this is something that we want to make sure that we identify. Now, God permits these things. You know, God doesn't necessarily send these things, but He He does permit these things uh, to happen in our world. And these are awesome opportunities for growth. And so. In my, uh, in my book, Foundations of Prophetic Maturity, um, one of the things that we deal with in chapter number seven uh, is actually uh, conquering your battleground. We're gonna, we're gonna probably get a little more in detail on tomorrow, uh, in tomorrow's session. We're gonna talk about something else in the book. But for right now, let's, let's just kind of visit with that uh, for a while. 
Let's visit with that just for just for a few minutes. So when we look at this now, remember uh, one of the things that one of the things that I said is that you know God He you know when we have these challenges in our life, one of the important things to remember is that God Himself didn't give us that particular challenge. Now think about this now, because if God actually gave us that challenge, or if God actually is is tempting us or trying us. Uh, then, then we might as well go ahead and cave into that thing that God has sent. Uh, but I think it, I think we make it pretty clear in uh, in James one, uh, James one fourteen uh, says this: But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed, or we're drawn away when we have a a particular desire upon the wrong things and see this is when we're actually this is when we're actually defeated this is when uh we're we're actually uh, uh challenged because we come to this point where we start to we start to have overwhelming desires which is what a lust is according to the king james uh it, it is a overwhelming desire um to to have something and so when we get to that point well, we're having an overwhelming desire to have the wrong thing. One of the things that actually happens is that we end up being drawn away or uh, that word drawn comes from a Greek word, which means to lure. So we be, we, we're lured out of the place that God have actually, uh, that God have actually chosen, that God have selected, even if he selected it, uh, selected it that place for our battle. And this is one of the things that must be understood, particularly uh, as we are, as we're engaged in uh, prophetic things, if we're, if we're, and, and more importantly, if we are, if we are actually stand in the office of prophet. If we stand in the office of prophet, it's, it's vitally important that we make sure that we understand that we have a position, that God has actually given us a position to actually, to actually do something about the things that we actually come into. Now, one of the things that's vitally important, and that is that we actually know our battleground, that we actually know our battleground. One of the challenges that I'm seeing Christians all the time, uh, uh, I'm seeing Christians all the time that are challenged in these particular areas simply because they don't know their battleground. They don't understand, they don't understand that if you're going to, if you're going to enter a battle, make sure God has selected where that battlefield is going to be. Because anytime we're, anytime we're lured out, or as James 1.14 says, every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. When that happens, we're lured off of the ground that God intended our victory to happen. And so when we're lured off of the ground where God intended for our victory to happen, we're then at the expense of the enemy. You know, it, it, it's at that particular point that the enemy have every right and he can defeat you. Why? Because God never selected that ground where we're, where we're trying to do battle. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Now, when we, now, we especially, we especially have to understand this if we are prophetic, if we're apostolic, or if we are, uh, uh, if we stand in one of those offices. Now, when we understand the fact that we stand in, uh, that we stand in one of these offices, uh, the, the office of the apostle, the office of the prophet, we have to understand that we have a major, major assignment. We have a major assignment to make sure that people win. You know, God had planned no failure for us. Uh, now, I, I want you to really, really get that all the way down in your bones. God had planned no failure for us. He haven't, he, haven't, he haven't established any time where he planned for you to fail. I'm going to say that one more time. God have not planned, not for one moment, for you and I to fail. He had planned no failure for us. And so, because he hasn't planned any failure for us, that means that we have to understand our battleground. Yeah. Well, 
when the enemy comes in on our battleground, we have every right to defeat him. Now, understand this. Not only do we have the right to defeat the enemy, we also we have the position to defeat the enemy. We have the office to defeat the enemy. We have the authority to defeat the enemy. We have every single thing that God has provided for us to defeat that enemy. Now, um, one of the things that we talk about from time to time, and I, I put a challenge out on, uh, out on Facebook Live on yesterday, um, because we've been hearing about this, uh, we've been hearing about this hurricane that's supposed to be, uh, that's supposed to be coming through, uh, that's supposed to be coming through the land, coming through North Carolina. Do you realize that if we begin to exercise the authority yes. that God has yes. actually given us, uh, there's no way for it to come. That's right. Now, now, now understand this. Uh, the news reporters, they are best friends. The, uh, uh, they're, they're reporting weather. They're reporting what the thing is, what the thing is doing. But you and I have been given yeah, authority, authority over every work of the yeah. enemy. We've been given authority Hallelujah. over anything that I the believe. devil can do. We've been given authority yes, over God. the elements of this planet. Yes, We've been given authority God. over these God. things. And so if you and I recognize, now watch this now, if you and I recognize the fact that we have authority over the elements, yes. when we recognize that and we begin to exercise that authority, now understand this now, we exercise that authority without wavering. Yes. It's at that point that that storm will turn and go right back out to the water. Thank you. Now we don't mind the rain, but we're not going to have a no. storm to come on the land that should stay on the on the water. Yes. <laughs> we're not going to have that to come no. and then wreck our properties, wreck the things that God has given us. No. Now understand this, but God now and and here's the thing God that we have know. to understand. God has given us authority yes. over the earth. He's given us the authority over it. And so he cannot bind the thing if we won't bind it. That's right. He cannot push the thing back if we won't push it back. That's right. And so now understand this. We have authority over that. Yes. I'll say that one more time. I say we have authority over that. Yes. Now that is one of the that is one of the uh, one of the things that we absolutely teach. Uh, that's one of the things that we teach in books like this. We teach because we understand the power and the authority that be that those that stand in the office of the prophet, those that are believers, those that are those that walk in the prophetic, those that walk in the apostolic. We understand the power and the authority that you're supposed to execute on the earth. And which means that the enemy is not supposed to be able to just do whatever he wants to do uh, when you are when you are in charge. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Glory to God. How many of you understand that? Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. So now, um, so one of the things that we have to understand is we have to understand our battleground. Mm -hmm. We have to understand our battleground. Then we have to understand how to conquer it. Because anytime the enemy comes on your ground. You have full right Hallelujah. to tell the enemy what to do. You, understand this. You have full right to put your big finger in your chest and say, I have full right to tell the enemy what to do. Yes, I have full right to tell the enemy what to do. See, he's on, he's on your ground. He's yes. on your property. Yes. See, Adam, Adam, he could have, he could have absolutely um, uh, commanded that serpent to get off of his property simply because the serpent was being sly and slick. He could, at any given point, he could have done it, but he didn't do it. And now we see exactly how that rolled out because he did not assume the responsibility over the over the property, over his land, over his region. Now, we don't have to fall to the same thing. I'll say that one more time. We don't have to fall to the same thing. We don't have to fall to the exact same thing that Adam fell to by not exercising the authority that God had already given him. Now, let, let, let's look at this just a minute. Over in uh, Genesis, let's take a look at that. Over in Genesis chapter number, um, chapter number one, Genesis chapter number one, let's take a look at verse number, uh, verse number 28. 
Uh, maybe we'll start from verse number 26. Glory to God. Because when we look at this and we, when we see uh, what power God has actually God has actually given to us, we just have to execute it. We just have to we just have to stand up and use the power uh, that He's actually given to us. Does that make sense to you? Okay. So now watch this now. So um, in verse number twenty six it says, "And God said, Let us make man in our image." And after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the uh, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and uh, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And so now understand this now. So what God has actually done, and so what God has actually done was He's given us authority. He's given us authority. Now we see where He gave uh, where He gave Adam. Uh, and the woman. Now remember, he he made them he made them male and female. And so when he says when he says man, he's talking about the generic term man, which means man and woman. And so he gave us authority over the earth. Well, Adam lost that authority. But now watch this. Now, watch this. Now Adam lost that authority when he when he failed to. Uh, when he failed to, watch this, what lured them out, what lured them out of God's, out of God's presence, what lured them away from the obedience factor of God, what, when they were lured out, they, they lost the battle. Now watch this. And as a result, they lost the, they lost the power over that particular region. Now understand this. It is absolutely possible for you and I to lose the same the same ground that God has actually given us. God's given us authority. He's given us He's given us absolute authority, and you and I have to have to now begin to exercise that authority. But now watch this now, because Jesus did something over in twenty eight and eighteen. Ah, uh, Matthew over in Matthew twenty eight and eighteen. I want you to check this out. Uh, let's start at verse number sixteen. Then the, 11, then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. Verse 17, and when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now remember, this is after, this is after he had, he had gone to hell and defeated, defeated hell. Glory to God. He defeated hell. He comes back from, he comes back from hell, comes back from the grave and says, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Two words, two words here that, uh, now, now understand this. God chose hell as a battleground. I'll say that one more time. God chose hell and the grave as a battleground. When God chose that, that means that Jesus is going to go there. And Jesus was, Jesus was going to go there, but he was also going to defeat the enemy, every demon, every devil right there, right there in the pits of hell. Now watch this. So he says, all power is given unto me, in verse number 18, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now, the word power, the two words for the word power, two words, uh, two Greek words for the word power. One is dunamis. That means dynamo, where we get our word dynamite. And so this is explosive power. Uh, but then you have another word, which is exousia, which means God-given authority. Uh, this is our ability to use the authority and the power, the dunamis, that God has actually delegated to us. Now, so when, when, when 
Uh, God has set us over a region as he, as he does prophets, as he does apostles. He sets us over a region and he gives us power over that region so that we could regulate what happens in that region. Thank you. Jesus. Now the challenge is, is that most of us have not have not uh, have not used the power that was delegated to us. And so a storm comes on the land, Jesus. does whatever it does, and we stand by and we say nothing. We're waiting on God to come from heaven mm. and to do something about this storm, do Speak. something about this situation, do something about this disaster. When God has actually put the authority in our hands, yes. he's delegated the authority to us, and you and I are supposed to rise up understanding yes. the authority that we have and speak to that thing, glory yes. to God, and command it not to come not on to this come. land. Not to come on this glory land. to God. Amen. And so I put a challenge out there on Facebook Live on yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know, rather than rather than prophets rising up, yes. uh, uh, giving, uh, promising people cars and houses and husbands and wives, let's do the real prophetic act, which is in the real prophetic act is to take authority, the same authority that Jesus explained in Matthew 20, yes. uh, uh, 28 and 18. Yes. The same authority there. Take authority over that, glory to God. Now, understand this. When you take authority over that, you must tell it what to do. Yes. When you take authority over a demon and a devil, Hallelujah. you must tell it what to do. And so you don't leave it up to them what they want to yes. do. They're, they're under your authority because they are on the ground of the battleground that God assigned to you. Yes. How many of you understand that? Yes. Glory to God. Thank and so now watch this now. Let's let's look at this just uh let's look at this just a bit further. Mm -hmm. So now watch this now. So Jesus says here. That all, that all power is given unto me yes. in heaven and in earth. Now watch this. Now watch the assignment that he gives. Anytime God, anytime God or Jesus gives, gives, uh, um, gives power, he also gives a responsibility to use that power. Right. Yes, and so now watch this. In verse number 19, he says, go ye therefore. Yes. Now, now and, and, and Anytime you see the word therefore, you need to know what it's there for, right? Okay, right. okay. so now watch this now. So go ye therefore. Why? Why do you why do we need to do that? Because he's given us power. That's right. He's given he's given us power. And he didn't give us power. Now watch this now. Remember, he didn't give us dynamo power, dynamite power, and and exousia, the ability or the authority to use that power. He didn't give us that just so that we can sit by and wait on him to come on here That's and right. do something. Yeah. No, you and I have to rise up and use the authority that he gave us. Yeah, Does that make sense to you? Yes, I said you and I have to rise up and use the authority that he gave us. Amen. Now, watch this. Now check this out over in the book of Luke, chapter number 10. Because somebody may say, well, you know, well, that was Jesus. Jesus said he had all power. Glory to God. Well, I want to show you something in, in chapter number 10. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, chapter number 10, right around verse number 17. And in verse number 17, it says this, And the 17 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power. I give unto who? Thank you, Jesus. I give unto who? Me. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and on scorpions and over all the power of the devil. Nothing shall by any means. Come on, somebody say nothing, nothing shall by any, any means. Okay, let's try that one more time. Nothing, nothing by, by any means. means. Nothing, nothing by, by any means. means. Nothing, by, nothing by, any means. by any means. Okay, now let, let's try that one more time. Nothing by any means shall hurt you. Nothing by any means. So whatever the thing is, it had no means to hurt you. But now remember this: that we cannot, uh, we cannot ignore the first part of this. I've given you power. I've given you authority. So nothing by any means shall hurt you. Why? Because you have power. You have authority. 
Now, if we let, if we just let the thing just roll out however it wants to roll out, then yeah, it will by every means hurt those that don't exercise their authority. Now, here's the thing that we have to understand. Uh, we have to understand that he was that Jesus at this point were, was talking to the leaders that he raised up. That's right. He's talking to the leaders. So now watch this now. So the people may not know that they have this authority. So the leaders have to stand up. And now understand this. Now this is one of the things, uh, this is one of the things that leaders, that we as leaders have to understand. That we have uh, been given authority over a region. That's right. Now let me let me try that one more time. So nothing shall nothing should happen in your region that you don't take authority over it, glory to God, and tell it what it's not going to do. In the name of Jesus. And then, then secondly, tell it what you need it to do. That's right. Amen. So in other words, now, and, and, and now, now understand this. Now, I've been, I've been really following, I've been really following the storm. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I've been speaking to it. Yes. And, and this is exactly what we teach. Uh, this is exactly what we teach. Uh, our folks to do in within the school of prophets. This is exactly what we teach. That when now now here's one of the here's one of the challenges, I, and the challenge I put out there on Facebook Live on yesterday. I want you know all of you that say you're prophets and you're in the North Carolina region. Yes. Um, you need to you need to begin to exercise that authority. Yes. North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. Glory to God. You yeah. know, because that's where they said the storm was going to enter yeah. on the east coast. Right. Now, yeah. if 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 the if that if that is what they're saying, then why don't we use the authority? Now I'm I'm telling you, I'm telling you that what I that as I was following this, that the thing was coming off the water. And they had and they had predicted on that night that I was listening to this, that it's going to come in. Uh, it's going to come in that way, and it's going to keep on proceeding north. That's right. And so now watch this now. And so what they what they actually said, because I'm following it, they said the thing has changed course. Yes. The thing came on, yes. was coming towards land, yes. and then it turned and it went back south. Yes. Now understand this. Understand this. Now I'm not saying that that is solely me. That's you understand? Right. But what I am saying is is that when we are pray. speaking to the thing, yes, it must the obey your words. Yes, yes, yes. Whether we're talking about a sickness, whether we're talking about a disease, whether we're talking about a storm, whether we're talking about wind and waves, Hallelujah. whatever that thing is, it must obey you. Yes. Why? Because God's given you the authority. How many of you understand that? Amen. Amen. Okay, so and once again, we're we're talking, we're really talking from my book here, mm -hmm. uh, Foundation of Prophetic Maturity, mm -hmm. chapter number seven, uh, conquering your battleground. Conquering. God, it, God wants you to conquer your battleground. Mm -hmm. Come on, put your big thing in your chest again. And say, God wants me to conquer my battleground. God wants me to conquer my battleground. See now, understand this. Whatever it is, whatever your battleground is, whatever that thing is that's been yeah. trying to conquer you. God wants you to conquer it. That's right. And there are all kinds of opportunities that the where the enemy tries to uh, the enemy tries to win against you on your battleground on your own ground. The enemy tries to win against you. But if we don't rise up and begin to speak, uh, begin to speak to that thing, glory to God. Let me tell you something: the enemy would just have free course on your own land. That's true. Now really, really think about that. The enemy will come on your land and do whatever he desire to do. Why? Because you did not use the authority that God has already given to you. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Does that make sense to you? Let's sense. let's go just a bit further here. Now, there is a there is a battle. Now, now understand this. Understanding the fact that there is a battle. Here's one of the things that we have to make sure that we don't do. We have to make sure, uh, first of all, that we do understand where that battle is coming from. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The second thing is you have to make sure that you don't make 
your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife, whoever is in human form, don't make them your enemy. That's Amen. right. Amen. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Because understand this. Because Ephesians chapter number six, uh, Ephesians chapter number six, verse number twelve says this: "For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Uh -huh. We wrestle what? Not against flesh and blood, but against what? Against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places." Now. Now, now, understand this, though, but God's given you authority over That's that. Right. That's right. I'm going to say that one more time. God's given you, you and me. He's given us authority over that. Yes, yes. Glory to God. He's given every last one of us authority over Amen. that. Amen. Does it make sense to you? Yes, yes. Glory to God. Come on, Amen. come on. Just look at somebody and say you have authority over you have authority over, over, over sickness, over sickness, over disease, over, disease, over the winds and the waves, the winds and waves, over everything that moves upon the earth. Everything that moves upon you the earth. have authority over that. You have authority. I have. We authority. just don't have authority over people. That's right. Understand this: the right. second you try to have dominion over people. They're going to rebel and they're going to come out swinging. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Why? Because God hasn't given us dominion over people. He hasn't given us. He hasn't given husbands dominion over a wife. Wives dominion over a husband. That's right. That's right. See, that's not how that works. We're we're to be leaders to our families. We're to be leaders to them. We're to be leaders of churches. Leaders of groups. Leaders of business. We're to be leaders over those things. But you have dominion over all of the things that creep and crawl upon the earth. Yes, sir. Amen. Thank, you, Thank you, Jesus. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Glory to Thank God. You, Lord God. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Did you, you guys getting something here? Oh, Glory yeah. to God. Let me tell you something. I, you. As I was going back over this book on last night, Glory to God, man, I, I thought, man, this is a good book here. What in the world? <laughs> Nikki, I'm telling you, this is really a good book. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. So now watch this now. Now here's something. Here's something. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna read you this right out of the book. Most of us are not aware of our battleground or where the attack is coming from. We have not been we have not been taught to do battle, and no wonder we're clueless of where it's coming from. Why? Because we haven't been taught to do battle. Uh -huh. We've been taught to uh -huh. we've been taught to cave in to things that come, things uh -huh. that are happening in our in our world, things that are happening in our families. Uh -huh. We've been just taught to just you know just just go ahead and accept it. You know God's uh -huh. trying to teach you something that is not God trying to no, teach you it's something. Not. No, it's not. I'm gonna say that one more time. That is not God trying to teach you something. Amen. God Amen. teaches us by the Holy Spirit. Yes. yes. Let me say that one more time. I say God teaches us by the Holy Spirit. He don't, he, don't, he don't put something on you to teach you something. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. No more than you put something on your children. That's right. Amen. To teach them something. You don't give your children any sickness to teach no, them something. No, you don't. You don't put no disease on your children Amen. to teach them something. Right. And God will not, and we serve this loving God, this awesome God that we serve, he will not put something on you to try to teach you no, something. No, he will not. He will not. <laughs> so now watch this now. And so here we are. Now, here's, here's something that we, I think we really, really have to grab hold to. We have to not only know our battleground, we have to know our enemy. Yes, yes, yes. We have to know how our enemy operates. And one of the things that our enemy does, he operates in a way to bring confusion, to make you think that it's the person that is uh, 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 the, the person that is displaying and an act from the enemy. Mm -hmm. It's not them. How do I know it's not them? Ephesians six twelve, right? But we wrestle not against flesh and blood. See, my, my battle is not with you. That's Your right. battle is not with me. That's right. See, we, 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 we wrestle with the enemy. And, and as a matter of fact, we need to stop wrestling with the that's enemy right. and use the power that's in our mouth that God has put in our mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. See, understand this. Whatever you're not speaking to, you're not 
affecting with the power that God has given you. Mm -hmm. You have to speak to it. Speak to it. Does that make sense? Yeah. You have to speak to it. Speak to See, most of us have self, most of us have self-fulfilling prophecies that we're decreeing all the time because we're speaking negatively mm -hmm. about we're speaking negatively about this or about that. We're decreeing uh, the bad thing that we think is going to happen. See, that's faith right there. Mm -hmm. It's a negative faith, but that's faith. Right. Glory to God. Because we, we believe that uh, this child is going to get sick. We believe that this, and we, and see, once we believe it, we decree it upon them. Why not? Why not begin a process of decreeing the word of the Lord over that child? Yes, we already see how they're acting. But why don't we decree the word of the Lord yes. over their lives? Why don't we begin to decree that they're coming out of this? Glory yes. to God. Why don't we be de begin to decree they're going to be free from this, from yes. this addiction? Yes. Why don't we begin to decree these things over their, over their lives and over their world? And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something that will begin to happen. They will become so very uncomfortable doing what they've been doing. Why? Because we've been decreeing this thing over their lives. Glory to God. We've been decreeing the word of the Lord over their lives. See, the people that are in our region don't have to stay like they are. Why? Because you are in that region. That's right. Amen. 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 Does that make sense to you? They don't have to stay like they are. Your marriage, it doesn't have to stay like it is. Amen. Your situation, it doesn't have to stay like it is. Your church Amen. doesn't have to stay like it is. Amen. If we begin, watch this. I dare you on, on Sunday morning, if you you know, if you get a hold of that microphone, I dare you on Sunday morning begin to decree the word of the Lord over that church. Glory to God. Say what it's about to become. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Our church yes. is going through a struggle right now. It may be. You know, our church is going through a struggle right now, but I decree on this Sunday morning, this marks the first day that we're coming out of this. Yes. Glory yes. to God. Yes. I dare you to begin to decree Hallelujah. that. Understand this. Now, you have to know that on the inside of you as, as a word that God has actually, uh, uh, that God has actually given you and you begin to decree that. Right. Now watch this. Everything, every element in that church, every element in that home, every element in that family, every element in that marriage has to begin to line up because you just decreed that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And see, do you understand what happens when you begin to decree that? God heard the words. And now watch this. Now according to Jeremiah, he watches over his word. He hastens his word to perform it. He watches over his word to perform that. And so now watch this. What, what if we don't say anything? What if we don't speak to it? He have nothing to watch over. Let me tell it one more time. See, if we don't say anything, if we're not decreeing anything, then he has nothing to watch over. He can only watch over the word that we decree. Yes. He's looking for us to say something. Yes. I mean, Jesus spent Jesus spent the greater a part the greater part of his ministry teaching the disciples and the apostles and all that would listen how to decree things. And so that's what we that's what we have to teach in the, in the prophetic. Glory to God. Amen. How do we create the things that we see that God have actually put? on the inside of us and showed us what is designed to be. Jesus. Do you realize that that is that that's all a prophecy is? It's not a guarantee. That's right. Okay. It's not a guarantee. It is God revealing to you what I have already approved from heaven. Jesus. And if heaven has already approved this thing, then earth needs to begin to get in line with what heaven has approved yes. and you will see a manifestation. Amen. Does that make sense to you? Amen. Glory, to Glory to God. But we have to cooperate with it, don't we? Yes, we do. If we don't cooperate with it, nothing can happen because God cannot override what you won't cooperate with. That's right. He can't override it. And so we have to cooperate with it. Regardless of what I, I see, we have to cooperate with it because we have the word on this. Mm -hmm. We have the word on this. God said this. 
when that when that prophet prophesied to you, you know, God, God was revealing to you what He has already approved in heaven. Yeah, heaven has already put the stamp of approval yes. on you. Now, the only thing that you have to do is go go right around to the loading dock and pick it up. Yes. You didn't hear what I said. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all you have to do. Isn't that, isn't that how it works? You go in the store and you establish what the purchase is going to be. Yes. You establish what the purchase is going to be. They stamp approved on, on, your, on that documentation there. They stamp approved. Now you take this paper right here and you go around uh, at the loading dock and go ahead and pick this up. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Now, the, the loading dock has no argument. Mm -mm. Why? Because it's already been approved. Earth has no argument. No, Why? No, because the thing has already been approved. Yes. Heaven has approved that. That's how you got that word. Heaven has already approved it. Go around to earth and pick it up. Glory yeah, to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, so when you when you get around there, you don't have to beg them for it. No, you don't. Glory to God. You go around there. Now watch this now. But how do you go around there? I promise you, you go around there with expectation. Yes, you do. Because you know that the confirmation already happened in heaven. I mean, in the store. And the confirmation has already taken place there. And so when you go around there, glory to God, you are in high expectation of receiving and so now watch this now. So you're going around there is you're cooperating yeah. with what yeah. happened on the inside yeah. of the store. When you, when you establish this thing, when the word of the Lord comes to you, when the word, when the prophet has spoken that word to you, is at that particular point that you got a real good understanding of what heaven has already said. Heaven has already said, I have given you the battle. Yes. I have given you victory over what you're fighting. I have already given you victory over this. Yes. Glory to God. I have established your victory. Yes. And so having established your victory, here we are right here. Yes. Here we are with high expectation. Oh, come on, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I want you to heighten your expectation. Neighbor, I want you to heighten your expectation, heighten your expectation on healing. Heighten your expectation on manifestation. Yes. Heighten your expectation on deliverance. Heighten, Heighten your expectation on, de on church development. Heighten, Heighten your expectation. Yes. Yes. And see, whatever your, whatever your thing is, heighten the expectation on that. What has God already decreed that I am getting ready to manifest this thing on your behalf simply because you cooperated with heaven? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Does that make sense to you? It makes sense. Glory to God. Let me, let me get this closed. Glory to God. Amen. Let me get this closed. Thank you, Jesus. You guys all right so far? Yes. Okay. So let's see here. Okay. So let's go ahead. Let's see if we can get this closed. You're all right. You're all right. Okay? You're all right. <laughs> Praise God. Thank God. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, so now watch this now. Watch this. Let's see. Okay, so we have to understand, we have to understand our battleground. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now watch this now. So God gave me an assignment uh, to make sure that, uh, that you and I are ready for our battleground. Mm -hmm. How? Through understanding and prophetic declaration. That's what I just explained to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Understanding that battleground and then also understanding how to prophetically decree in that battleground. Glory to God, or or prophetically decree in that ground. Glory to God, or prophetically decree to that. Uh, well, let's see, what was the name of that storm again? That hurricane called her what? Florence. 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 Uh, understanding how to prophetically decree, Florence, you are headed back out to the yes. uh, back out to the lake. You are headed back out to the ocean. Yes. You, that's where you you gonna do everything you gonna do on the ocean. And as a matter of fact, Florence, we command you to die now in Jesus' name. We command you to cease in your power, cease in your operation, cease in your maneuvers right now in Jesus' name. And we'll and understand this. And we will hear the report that that thing went back out to the ocean and it began to lose its power. Yes. Glory. Are, are you understanding? Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Understand this. 
that look, God made us a promise. Yes, he did. That he would no longer destroy mankind by water. That's yeah. right. That's See, that's, that's just a whole bunch of wind and water that got together. God, you, we have a promise. We have a covenant with yes, God. We do. Yes. yes, we do. Every yes, single we do. time we see, uh, every time we see uh, a rainbow, that is a confirmation yes, of a promise that God made, a yes. covenant that God made with yes. us, that I'll no longer do that. And so how is it that all of these church folk have come up years ago when that thing happened in Louisiana? Oh, that's the judgment of God. No, God already promised. That was not him. That, I'll tell you what it was. It was the fact that when they, when they gave us a forecast of that thing coming, we didn't speak to it. Yeah, we didn't speak to it. Let, let, us, let us never make that mistake again. Yeah. Begin to speak to it. Yeah. Glory to God. Begin to decree it's never going to happen again. Begin to decree that that thing's death. And it dies out on the water. Yes, yes. It started out on the water. Let it die out on the water. Yes. Amen. Amen. And never come to land. Never. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Let's Praise get God. this thing closed here. <laughs> Praise God. Now, <laughs> understand this. Over in Matthew chapter number 11, verse number 12, it says this, from the, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven have suffered violence, mm -hmm. but the violent must take it by force. Mm -hmm. that, that word take there is really, really interesting. The word take, it is, it is actually, when you look at the word take and the word, uh, and the word believe, or no, I'm sorry, the word receive. When you look at the word take and the word receive, it's actually the same word. In, in, in the Greek language, it's actually the same word. The, word. the word take and the word receive is the exact same, it's the exact same Greek word. And so when you look at that, so what is God actually saying regarding this people of the kingdom? Glory to God. See, the kingdom of God has suffered violence. The kingdom of heaven, it has suffered violence. But the violent must receive it by force. Or now, receive was the passive was the passive of the word take. The word take is the is the aggressive form of the word receive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Glory to God. And so now watch this. So when 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 the Bible says that we that we are to believe that we receive, the translation is believe that you take it. That's Glory right. to God. That's because right. that's what that's we right. do in the that's kingdom. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And see, understand this, Florence. Florence doesn't die just because just because we we passively believe that God's going to do something about this. She don't begin to die until we become aggressive yeah. regarding regarding keeping her on the ocean and commanding her to die there. Yes. Commanding her power yes. to be yes. stripped away from her yes. Right, yes. right out there on the water. Yes, yes. We, see, see, the violent must take it by force. The violent must be forceful in, in its act. It must be forceful. And so you and I, now, and, and understand this, that is one of the reasons that most, most people in the prophetic that have, a, that have an assignment prophetically, that is one of the reasons that most of them are pretty radical. Most of them are, most of them radically decree things and radically accomplish things. Why? Because we understand that we must take something, That's glory right. to God, That's by force. Right. Right. We must take it by force. Mm -hmm. We must shut it down by force. Yes. The enemy doesn't have to just do whatever he wants to do against your life, against your family. Whatever it is that you possess, you have the authority to shut the enemy down at any time. Mm -hmm. Amen. How many of you understand Amen. that? Amen. Glory to God. That's our, that's our privilege. That's our opportunity. Glory to God. Amen. That we can just shut him down. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Here's what we can't do. We can't shut him down divided. No, we can't. No, we cannot. A house divided against itself won't stand. And so now watch this now. So we are a house. Yes, we are. We are the house of God. Yes, we are. We are the temple of God. Yes, and the only way that the only way that we can uh, 
become a force against the force that's trying to penetrate our land is that we have to be unified. That's right. That's right. Amen. Because Amen. now remember what the what it says in, in the Old Testament. It says this, a th uh, one shall put a thousand to flight. Mm -hmm. Two could put ten thousand to flight. Yes. Amen. Ten thousand demons to flight. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you and I became unified. It is called unified power. That's right. You and I put, in other words, you put your ability with mine. Mm -hmm. I put my ability with yours. We put our ability with yours. And we can go ahead and take the city. Just That's a few right. of us. That's right. I'll say that one more time. That's right. That's right. I know this sometimes just, it just seems so far-fetched. You know, but let me tell you something. It is it is absolutely possible. It is possible. Now, now think about this. Yeah. I want you to think about this. One man comes on the earth, Jesus. He comes on the earth and he wins 12. One of them happens to go, go bad, Judas. Mm -hmm. So he has 11 people. Oh, I need you to really get this. He started with 11 people. And he has literally dominated the world. With the, with the word that he preached to 11 people or to 12 people that ended up being 11 people. And, and, and the more they broke off, the more they broke off and spread it in different lands, they began to populate the gospel in that particular land. Now, and it kept growing and it kept growing because every time there was a part that went that way, they gathered more people together. Yes. The part that went that way, they gathered more people together. And before you know it, there was a connect from city to city, from state to state, from country to country, there was a connect. Why? Because 12 people got together around one man. Yes, yes. What kind of impact can we make if we just, if we just, now watch this now, if we just, now, I'm not going to say if we just hoop and holler at each other. No. Okay. But if we get together okay. and make the deposit of what we have known in somebody else. Grab, look, I want to challenge you. Grab, but when you go back to your city, I want you to grab, just grab a group. Just grab a group and say, I want to teach you. I want to teach you how to, how to conquer your battleground. Uh -huh. I want to teach you. That's what yes. I want to teach you. I want to. I want to teach you. Do you realize that if you went back, if you went back, <coughs> glory to God. Now watch this. You went back and you said, "I want to teach you. Mm -hmm. I want to teach you how to conquer your battleground." Very few people are going to say, "I'm not interested," mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because everybody want to know. Please tell me how to win in this. This thing is kicking my butt. Mm -hmm. Please tell me. Tell me how to win in this. Mm -hmm. Please tell me if you have some answers for me of how I can win in the situation I'm dealing with right now. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm open ears. Uh -huh. I just want to know. Please tell me how, how to win. How? How? And now watch this. And I'm telling you that as we teach people how to win, it, now, you may not be able to gather together the, the entire thousand member church, but can you gather five that will say, you know, I want to know this. I want to know how, I want to know how to, 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 to win in this battle that I'm yes. going through right now. Glory to God. I want to know how. And that, that's all I want you to do. I want you to grab five people. Mm -hmm. If five turns into ten, fine. Mm -hmm. Teach ten people everything that you know about what you learn here. I want you to te te teach that ten people everything that you know. I want to teach you how to win in your battle. I want to give you a set of principles in your battle. I wish I could have got to that other piece in here, but you know, uh, I want to teach you. I want to teach you just just a few things, keys, principles, how to win. Yes. Glory to God. And one of the first things, one of the first things is now watch this. One of the first things is you must understand your battleground. Yes. Yes. Second, the second thing is that I, you you must you must not fight people if you're going to win in your battleground. You must not fight people because they're not your problem. That's right. How many of you understand that? That's right. You know, another thing is you must understand the enemy. That's right. 
You must understand the enemy that's been warring against you all this time. Can I, can I give you just a real special piece on that? Do you understand that uh, the enemy, you don't have a new enemy. If you really think about it, if you really calculate it, he attacks you the same time every year. And a lot of times it's in the exact same way. If it works, why change? He don't develop a new strategy. It's the same strategy. It's the same thing year after year because it keeps working. And so he keeps working what works. Any, any person would do that, right? If you find something that works, you're not going to change. You're going to keep working that that works. And so the enemy does exactly that until you learn about your enemy. And you learn that your enemy have no power over you. And you rise up and you start speaking to your enemy. Tell him what he's going to do. Yes. Tell him what he's not going to do. Tell him he's, he, he, I am sending, I am, I am taking authority over you from this point forward. In Jesus' name. Yes. And you have no authority over me. That's what he wants to hide from you. He doesn't want you to know that you have been given authority by God over every work of his hand. 